John the Baptist's life was focused on one thing, to glorify Jesus Christ. God destined him to a life of poverty, opposition, and martyrdom. Yet John's obedience provides us an example to follow. Micah Herbster calls our attention this week to four qualities we can emulate from this humble life in the shadows. The lost life. Yesterday on the podcast, we started a series entitled The Lost Life, exploring the life and legacy of John the Baptist. And we looked at John's mission found in Luke chapter 1, verses 15, 16, and 17, and how God intended to use the life of John the Baptist to point other people to Christ and to turn their attentions, to prepare the way of the Lord. And today I want to emphasize and really look a little bit deeper into John's message that he preached in his earthly ministry. I want you to consider with me this morning, Matthew 3, 1 through 3, where the Bible says this, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, here's his message, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. The first portion, the first part really of of, uh, John's message was this, repent, repent, turn, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, the message to those who heard John the Baptist preach was very simple. Turn from your wicked ways. If you're familiar at all with the nation of Israel, you know that they were up and down and from one God to the other God, back to the true God, to Yahweh, to other strange gods. And they were all over the place. And when John steps on the scene, they are are not serving God as they should. They are not obeying God as they should. Uh, the Pharisees are there t- saying, preaching a, a false law, a false gospel, a false message to the people saying, if you want to be right with God, you got to do X, Y, and Z. If you want to be close to God, you got to keep all of these rules and regulations. John steps on the scene and he says, that is not the rule here. You should turn from your wicked ways, repent. And I love this because in this Matthew 3, verses 1 through 3, we understand that there's a reason that John steps on the scene at, at, the, on the scene at this point at this juncture in time. Repent, why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, the reign of God was about to be ushered in. Jesus, the Messiah, Christ, was about to step on the scene and rule and reign in hearts. And so John's message was, you folks need to repent. And that is the call to all of us today as well. The kingdom of God is at hand. It is a present reality and it is a future promise. The the kingdom of God, God's kingdom is not of this world. He is ruling and reigning in the heavens. We ought to repent. And this is the call to every unbeliever. If you're listening to this podcast and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is the call to you. Repent, turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sin, your lusts, your failures, your wicked desires, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come to Jesus. Jesus invites all those who are laboring and are heavy laden. He says, come unto me and I will give you rest. There's a turn. There's a directional shift that takes place when we repent. Not only did John preach a message of repentance, but John also preached a message of obedience. In Matthew 3 and verse 8, we read that John preached, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And again, in Luke 3 and verse 8, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. So John preached, come to Christ in repentance. Get ready, the kingdom of Christ is at hand. But hold on, this is not just a ticket out of hell and a ticket away from your sins. This is repentance that demands something of your life. There should be some fruit that accompanies your repentance. And he says in in Luke 3, some people begin to ask him, uh, what shall we do then? How shall we live? And John answers and he says unto them, he that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then someone else came to him, a publican came to him to be baptized and said unto him, master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, exact no more than that which is appointed you. 
And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. He's building this response, this fruit worthy of repentance to them. That is to say that when Christ comes into our life, he doesn't come just to indwell us, to keep us from hell, but he actually comes to change us. He comes to make our way new. And that's the message that John preached. Obey, have these fruits that were worthy of repentance. So he preached a message of repentance. He preached a message of obedience. And then finally, in our podcast today, I want you to think and consider with me that John preached a message saying to the people, look, behold the Lamb of God. John one twenty nine is probably one of the most famous sayings of John the Baptist. He says, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see, John the Baptist never took away one sin from one individual. You see, John the Baptist never baptized one person out of hell. John the Baptist was there pointing to another, looking to Christ, looking to the Messiah, saying, that's the Lamb of God. That's the sacrifice. That's the person that's going to take away the sins of the world. And so in many, many ways, John's life and his message and his ministry to those around him was this, look to the Lamb, the spotless sacrifice. Don't look to this preacher. Don't look to uh, my lifestyle. None of those things will save you, but look to Christ, look to the Messiah. He's the one that will take away the sin of the world. Not only does John say in John 1 and verse 29, behold the Lamb of God, but he was so emphatic that when people came to him in John 1 and verse 19 and asked, who are you? Who are you, John? He confessed in verse 20 and he denied not, but he did confess, I am not the Christ. You see, John understood from his calling that he was there to point towards someone else. He was there to lift someone else up. And so John's message was obviously one of truth. All right, here is your need. Here is your natural state. You must repent. But John's message was also one of hope. He didn't just tell them how bad they were and that they had no hope, but he told them the kingdom of heaven is at hand and look and behold the lamb of God, which comes to take away the sin of the world. Here is the solution to your problem. And notice that the solution was the focus not only of John's message, but of his entire life. And that was Jesus. His call and his message was for others to turn their attention to Christ. Don't you know that in a very real way, this is not the natural tendency of mankind. When you get up in front of people and people begin to notice you and begin to listen to you, isn't it true that we naturally want them to follow what we say, what we do. We want them to live how we want to live. But oh, John the Baptist turns everyone's attention away from himself. And he turns their attention to Lord Jesus Christ. You want to lose your life? You want to set your life aside? It's going to come to the person who points to Christ who says, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. May God help us today in our lives to point to Christ, not just in our influence, but in our own minds, in our own affections, in our own uh, lifestyles, that every part of us would be directed towards becoming like Christ. And we would echo with uh, the writer of Hebrews and say, I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. We're going to have another episode here on the Walk Talks podcast. We look at the life and legacy of John the Baptizer and realize that the life lost in Christ's kingdom is the life gained. Thanks for being part of Walk Talks today by listening and subscribing to our podcast. Follow us on social media to get sneak peeks at future episodes and to share your favorites with others who would benefit as well. We hope your heart has been enriched by God's word to take your next step in following Christ.